Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be taking a look on how to create a repository on the SVN server that we've installed on our computer. Now, from here on out, whenever we perform actions with SVN, whether it be the repository or the our working copies, whenever possible, we're going to show you how to do it in both the command line with the command line utilities that SVN provides you, and also with Tortoise SVN, which is that third-party GUI interface that allows you to interact with the repositories in your working copies within the Windows context menu. Now the first thing we need to make sure of is that our SVN server is running. And if you created the Windows service in the last video and you restarted your computer, it should be running as we speak. So just to verify that, I'm going to go into my control panel, administrative tools, and then services. Bring this up. And let's just scroll down and make sure that our SVN server is running. There it is, and the status is started, so our server is running. We can close this out. And now let's open up our command line. So we're first going to create our repository through the command line utilities that SVN provides us. Now, the utility we need in order to create a repository is the SVN admin utility. So we're going to type in SVN admin, and then we want to do the create, and then we want to give it the location of where the repository should be. Now since all of our repositories for our SVN server is going to be stored in the repositories folder on the C drive, as you remember that's where we told the Windows, the Windows service that that's the root of our SVN server, that's where we're going to want to create our repository. So we go ahead, C drive, slash repositories, and then we want to pass it the name of the repository. And since this repository, we're going to be interacting solely with the command line utilities, we're going to call this command line. Click enter, and it should do nothing and just return you to the command prompt. And if we go ahead and go into our repositories directory, cd up twice, and we can cd into repositories. If we take a look at what's in here, you'll notice the command line directory is in here. Now there's a few other things we need to do in order to just, just set up the configuration for our repository we've created. So let's go ahead and cd into the command line folder. If we take a look at this, you'll notice a few folders and a few different files. What we're interested in right now is the con config folder. So let's go into that, take a look at what's inside here. And you'll notice there's an auth file, a password file, and an SVN serve config. Now we're only going to be taking a look at two different at the two files, which is the password and the server config file for the time being. And let's go ahead and open up the server config file, which is SVN serve dot config. We're going to open that up in Notepad. Oh. Obviously I typed in oh yeah, I typed that in wrong. There we go. And we're going to take a look at three different settings that we can we can populate. And those settings are going to be the anonymous access, the authenticated access, and then the password DB. Now the, the anonymous access is going to be what access people have to our repository if they don't provide a username or password. And we're going to uncomment this out, and we're going to keep it at read, which means that people will be able to download files from our repository without needing any credentials but if they want to commit changes to our repository that's when they're going to have to give us a username and password and we can also set this to write where that would give them access to both read and write to the repository without any login information and then you can also give it none which would that would disallow any type of anonymous access to our repository so if you want to keep it closed to only people you want to configure to have access to it that's when you would use none now we're going to uncomment this second option which is the authenticated access and this is the level of access authenticated users have and we're going to have that at write because that's generally what this is set to um, so that anyone who does has, have a login for this particular repository we're going to allow them to both read and write to the repository itself and then the last configuration and last option we're going to enable is this passwords db which is the name of the file that stores our usernames and passwords and this is that passwd file that we saw previously 
So you can go ahead, save this file, close that out. And let's go ahead and open up that password file in Notepad. And you'll notice there's a few examples where you get Harry equals Harry secrets, Harry's secret, and then you get Sally equals Sally's secret. And this is this basically just follows the format of username equals and then the password. Now, because we want to simulate multiple users on the repository, as that's going to be essential for simulating certain actions we need to perform, we're going to create two users. We're going to create user1, and that's, that username is going to have a password of password1, and then we're going to create user2 with a password of password2. Go ahead, save. Close this out. And now we have both the server config to our likings and the password database to our likings. So what we're going to do is we're going to cd back into our C drive. And now I'm going to cd into my desktop for my user. So I'm going to go to users slash Ryan Zach slash desktop. And then here I'm going to create a directory. So I'm going to do make directory and I'm going to call a command line one. And I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to do make directory command line 2. And this is going to be our command line 1 user and then our, our command line user 1 and then our command line user 2. So we're going to simulate multiple people connecting to this repository even though it's on the same server. Oh, well, that's fine. And if I just move this out of the way, bring those two folders that we just created into focus. So now we've got our folders that we need in order to check out the copy of our repository. Now in order to do a checkout, we're going to use the SVN utility. So we're going to type S SVN, and then we're going to type the checkout, as that is the command we want to perform. And now to access our SVN server, it is SVN colon forward slash forward slash, and then we, we need to know the host. And the, since this is running on our local computer, the host is going to be localhost and then we need to pass it the path of the repository and the repository is command line and we want to check this out into the command line one first go ahead it checked out at revision zero it's at revision zero because we haven't actually placed anything in the repository and then we're going to perform the same action except for command line two so now both of these if we go into if we go ahead and go into the one of these folders and we do a dir slash ah which is going to show us hidden files you'll notice there's that dot svn folder which is hidden normally but that's that just shows that we have checked out and that these folders are now linked to the command line repository so this is everything we need to do in order to set up a repository through command line so what we're going to do is we're going to close out the command line as we are done with this step and now we're going to do the same exact thing except this time we're going to do it through tortoise svn so what we need to do is we need to open up our computer and go to the c drive and then go to the repositories and you can see our command line now we want to create a new repository and we're going to call this tortoise because anytime we deal with tortoise svn we're going to be using this repository to show all of the examples. Click OK. Now if we right click on this, you'll notice you have some you'll notice the context menu has SVN checkout and SV and Tortoise SVN. We want Tortoise SVN and then we want to create repository here. It says the repository was successfully created. So now if we go in here, you'll notice we have that same format of the folders and files. So we want to go into the config go into our SVN serve and go ahead and modify this file like we did with the other basically just uncommenting the options but leaving the default values and then if we go in here we're going to want to open this up with notepad and we're going to create our user1 which equals password1 and then our user2 which equals password2 and just fix that, save that Okay, and let's just go up here, and just to make sure, I want to make sure I didn't make a mistake in the passwords folder for our command line. Okay, both are equals. Just wanted to verify that. Now that we've successfully created our Tortoise SVN repository, if we go ahead and go to our desktop, 
Well, actually, let's just close this out. Go to our desktop. We're going to create a new folder. We're going to call this folder Tortoise 1. And then we're going to go ahead and create a folder for Tortoise 2. And this is going to allow us to simulate, again, two people connecting to the same repository from the same computer. Now, if we right-click on our Tortoise 1, you'll notice we have the SVN checkout. And what we're going to pass here is that same exact thing that we passed with the command line, which is the SVN colon forward slash forward slash. Localhost is our host name, except this time we're going to pass it Tortoise, as Tortoise is the name of the repository we want to check out. I'm going to click OK. OK. We go ahead here, do it again. You notice here we've got the same repository. If we just take a quick look, we have the checkout directory, which is the directory we right clicked on. We have the checkout depth, which is full recursive. And then we've got the revision, and we want to pull the latest revision. Go ahead, click OK. And that's all set. So now we have successfully created our repositories, and we have also checked out those repositories creating two folders for each to simulate that multiple user on our desktop. And we've done this both through the command line and through Tortoise SVN. Thanks.